Hey everyone, today I'm going to be seeing what it looks like if I mix the world's blackest paint with the world's brightest paint. Musu Black mixed with Lit. Can you actually have a glow-in-the-dark, completely black paint? And then I'm going to be talking about some of the science behind the Lit paint. How does it glow? And why, when you apply heat to it, does it glow even brighter? Previously, I painted my entire room with Musu Black, and that was pretty awesome. And then I also painted a room with Lit, and that was pretty awesome too. So naturally, a lot of people requested that I mix both paints together and see what happens. So today we're going to be mixing them together, and if it turns out to have a cool effect, I'll paint the room with it. Let's get a bunch of our lit pigment. Mix it with a bunch of the Musu black paint. Now let's paint it onto a plate and let it dry and see how it looks. Okay, so I've mixed Musso Black with the lit paint now. So I have my black hole leaned up against my garage here. Turn on the light and it's black. Turn off the light and it glows so bright. That is so cool. <laughs> light on, it's completely black. Light off, <laughs> it just lights up the room. It's literally a black flashlight. That is so weird. It's literally a black light. Light on, completely black. Light off, completely light. Oh, that is so cool. So as promised, I'm going to paint the room with this newfound paint. So how about we leave the tops completely painted with lit, and then I do the floor completely in Musso Black and then I'll paint over it with the Musso Black Lit combination and see if you can have a completely dark floor that also glows somehow. <laughs> Look at the floor here. Okay, here we go into the room with no floor. Look at this. This looks like a black hole. So you'd think that this floor were black right here. But watch what happens when I shine my flashlight on it. <laughs> it leaves a bright green circle right there. Okay, so look at this. It still writes on the floor. <laughs> That's so cool. Now it's definitely not as bright and it doesn't stay for long, but you can see it show up on the black floor. So in order for heat to have an effect on this paint, you have to have first illuminated it at some point. And then the rate at which it releases the light depends on the temperature in the room or the temperature of the paint. For example, if I light a spot up on the wall, the rate at which it releases light can be changed depending on how hot it is. So it has to first be charged first, and I can prove that by lighting up a spot on the wall and then later coming in with a heater once it doesn't look like it's illuminated anymore and seeing if I can get any light out of that spot specifically. So I can't see it at all. Let's see if I can see it when I heat the wall. Oh, I see it, right there. Let me get it really hot so you can see it. Look at that. So I heated up the whole wall there, but this is the spot that got illuminated due to the heat because it had previously been charged with the UV light. And also that means that if you cool the object down, it's not going to release the light very fast. So it'll hold on to it for longer and release it at a lower rate. And so it will appear dimmer. Now let's see what I mean by pouring a bunch of liquid nitrogen on the floor of my charge lit room. And I'm gonna set a cup of liquid nitrogen on it. So this is negative 196 Celsius. So you can see how dark it is there. And if I put my hand next to it, you can see that my hand makes it glow brighter. Can even pour some liquid nitrogen on it. see it spread its darkness out. <laughs> so 
So this is cold, but if I can heat it up, then it will glow again. <laughs> now the way that the world's brightest paint works is called persistent lumination. And it has a really interesting history. It goes back to the ancient Chinese history where there was a painting of a cow that was quite mysterious. They found that at night you could still see the painting and nobody knew why. It wasn't until many years later that we found out it was probably due to the ink that was imported from Japan that had calcium and sulfur compounds in it from a volcano that allowed the painting to glow. Now traditional glow-in-the-dark materials like this glow-in-the-dark star here aren't very impressive. Typically they use a type of zinc sulfide compound in it. Sometimes it's doped with cobalt. But it doesn't last very long when you charge it, just a few minutes. And for 130 years, this type of glow-in-the-dark material dominated the industry. When people wanted them to glow longer, they even went so far as to put radioactive compounds in it that continually put out radiation that made it glow. And then in 1996, after three years of intense research in Japan, a researcher developed a material that was made out of strontium, aluminum, oxygen, europium, and dysprosium. Now the europium and dysprosium are two very rare elements found in the earth, but he was able to combine them in such a way that it gave persistent illumination. He was able to achieve the dream of one night illumination. Now the way this powder works is you need something that can excite it in the first place. So you need some ultraviolet light or visible light. And what happens when the photons from the visible light or the ultraviolet light hit the europium, it causes the electrons from the europium to be knocked off of it into a higher energy state. And those higher energy state electrons can actually get captured by the dysprosium atoms. And once those electrons are captured by the dysprosium atoms, they go into a trapped state. And they're gonna stay there. And they're gonna stay there until they're thermally excited and can get knocked out of that state. And once they get thermally excited and get knocked out of that state, they can get recaptured by the europium atoms, and as they fall back down from that higher energy state, they release a photon of light around the green range of light. So if those dysprosium atoms are actually getting jostled into more often, they're more likely to lose one of their electrons that fall back down to the europium atoms and release a green photon of light. And so what that means for the pigment is once you charge it, if you want to release the light faster, you just have to heat it up. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and also hit that bell so you can be notified when I release my latest video. And check out theactionlab.com if you haven't yet. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.